Hello and welcome to UMATSAT. My name's Mark Higgins and today I'm going to be looking at how we use the dust RGB in monitoring low-level moisture. This is going to be particularly useful if you are monitoring a convective environment. You'll be looking at the clouds, you'll be looking at radar information, but if you want to look at the pre-convective environment or the moisture environment that the convection is moving into, this can be a useful tool for you. So this is a case from the weekend, from the 25th of June. And you can see the convective cell here and the moisture around it. The way you can tell the moisture is you're looking at the slightly darker environment around the convective system. And you can see as well here in the Po Valley, there's a slightly darker blue. The way the dust RGB works, the red channel, uh, the red beam in the dust RGB, takes two channels. Those two channels, the 10.8 and the 12, are slightly differently sensitive to low-level moisture. That difference is what makes this difference here. So when there's moisture, you see a little bit more blue in those channels. So if I set that to play, you can see how this storm evolves, and you can see the moisture around it moving with the storm. One of the limitations of using the dust RGB in this way is it's only really useful during the day where you've got an inversion on the surface, where you've got subsidence, or at night, you don't have a nice warm surface beneath it to really make that difference show up. And so you can see as the day progresses here, you lose that discrimination between the moist and the dry areas. So the whole of the land surface has a slightly pinkish hue to that blue. It's not because it's dried up, it's because that's a limitation of using this RGB in that way. I'm gonna show you two other cases from the UMATSAC case study library which you might find useful and interesting. So this is one case over Europe with a line of convection over the center of Europe with drier air to the north and more moist air to the south. And you can see here this boundary, this boundary between the blue and the slightly lilac above it. The difference is quite faint, but you can clearly see it. What you might want to do is also compare this with your um, humidity estimates in whatever NWP model you're using. And here we're going to do that using the ECFWF model. And again, you can see a close matchup here between the dust RGB and the moisture boundary it's showing and the boundary shown up in the absolute humidity field from ECFWF. A really striking example I'll show you, this is from a case study in Yemen and looking at sea breeze and sea breeze fronts. And you can see in this animation, the evolution of the sea breeze during the day. As the moist air travels in across the land, you can really see the dark blue starting to appear across the land before the convection then gets triggered. And that's just a really striking example. We'll link to the case studies from this video. So that's looking at the dust RGB for low-level moisture monitoring. A couple of things to watch out for. That sensitivity to the low-level moisture is most prevalent during the day. Don't try this at night. It won't work so well. Or we've got an inversion or subsiding air leading to a, uh, an inversion. Because then you won't see the temperature discrimination so well between those two channels. Have a look at the case studies. If you've got questions, email opsops.umetsat.int. And we hope you enjoy exploring the data.